Podcast where we will be establishing the underground. I'm your host, MOB, and this is episode 11, season 2. Appreciate you guys for stepping in and watching us, man. Today's guest is none other than Go Green Botanicals. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> so, yeah, man, um, I would possibly say the best, definitely in New Braunfels. Possibly even in Texas, CBD. Um, definitely a pioneer advocation of CBD and hemp in Texas. That's for damn sure. So uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Ben, man. What's going on? Awesome. Go Green, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate hey. you, man. Hey, Appreciate no. you stopping by, man. Having me here. Hey, not a problem. Before we get started today, though, I'd like to give a shout out <clears throat> to Villanueva's Pizza. I hear they got some of the best pizzas here in town, also. So, I mean, step by. It's all in West San Antonio here in New Braunfels. So give them a look out. They also deliver, so check them out, man. And I'm actually, right actually they don't deliver no more. Really mm-hmm. you know, I, I know, that's my <laughs> <problem. laughs> Okay, so <laughs> y'all don't deliver no more. <laughs> but they're still good. They still <laughs> got <laughs> pizza. You can order through favors. Okay, see, they're there still doing favors. There you go. There you go. But still check them out. Just because they don't deliver, still check them out. Here they popping. So. Alright, before. Alright, so right now, first segment we're gonna get into is Lyrics that you live by. Uh, what song resonates with you lyric wise that you just can't live without? Like, when you just does your go to and you know all the lyrics of the song. What is the shit? I did buy it. Master P. Oh! Master P. I did buy it. Well, that's an easy song to. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be easy, man. Nice. We're always, yeah. yeah. When you're stuck, you gotta have something easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. So, what is Gold Green's sole purpose? It's to provide a, a good health and wellness, uh, you know, to our friends and family out here. It kind of started off that way. Uh, shit, I grew up right here in San Antonio Street, right there next to what they call the Apple Bar. So, I do got deep roots here in the Ruffles and uh, losing, you know, someone close to you to cancer, mm-hmm. which we talked about earlier on yeah, the yeah. situation, yeah. and it, it really hits you. But uh, also the passion of we. I've been, I'm not gonna lie, I did it, I did it back in high school, I, I sold it back in high school. Hey, I, man, I had to do it, man. Um, yeah, no, that's the whole goal, man. I got a question. Uh, you know, a lot of people that get into that type of business or, you know, street pharmacists, you know, whatever, a lot of them look up to someone like Scarface or, you know, Al Capone or, you know, some stuff, people like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and other people don't, you know, it, it could be, you know, other icons. What were, what icons did you look up to that helped get you into the business? If there was, there was anyone that, you know, kind of helped with that, with that mission of yours. Because I mean, it could be, I mean, it could be Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, no, you know no, no. I mean? it, 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 there's, there's actually quite a few going, going through. No matter how you look at it, I mean, on the, on the rap side to uh, even as big as Coca Cola, what mm-hmm. they've done on their marketing, um, the way the, the way the rap industry is collaborating with other you know other rap artists, I'm, and, and what I'm talking about now, I'm talking about back then the way uh, what was it Master P and was always collaborating with others, Sip the Shocker. I mean, you have all them Snoop Dogg, you know, collaborated with Master P. You know, you know, just just the way you look at things. I actually look up to just the entire business industry. It's not just a specific person, but the inspiration comes from a lot of things, man. So I'm not, I'm not inspired by one, but but more many, more you know many. That's cool. What's the next one? No. All right. What is the hardest decision you've had to make when deciding? All right, this is what's going. What I want to do. The hardest decision of deciding of what I want to do, what you want to do. This is what you wanted to do. What sacrifice did you have to make to get where you needed to be? Okay, uh, I like that one. I mean, shit, there's, there's, there's really, there's really so many sacrifices, man, that, that we've had to go through. Um, 
there's a ton that, that, that we've gone through. There's just so many running in my head, man. I mean, I just, also for the kids, uh, that's, that's actually my number one, is, is them. Looking at them, like I said, I mean, I, I'm, I'm from here in the Bronx, you know. Uh, half my life, I lived right over here. So, you know, my cousins being locked up and everything, you know, and my parents being on me all the time, shoot, man, I did not want that for my kids either, you know, because I, I knew where that's at, so I need to leave something behind for them. So, that's a huge, a huge one right there. I start getting deep, man. I start getting deep when I'm fucking out. Hey, ah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. This is, this is, a lot of times, man, the greatest sacrifices yeah, yeah. have the, you know, uh, what's what it has the biggest payoff. You know what I mean? The bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the payoff. A lot of times, you know what I mean? Huge payoff, man. Um, being, able, being able to win, and you know, well, I mean, we're not winning yet. It's not there yet. It's still a big battle with Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, getting this shit legalized. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a huge battle, man, that we're going through. Banking industry. I mean, the hurdle is real when it comes to opening up a CBD shop. It's, it's, it's not one of those that you know. Hey, let me open up a candy shop. Now, nah, because a bank will definitely be able to lend and to you open up accounts when it comes to a normal business like a candy shop. But when it's CBD, man, there's a shit ton of hurdles. Coming in, coming in from a servicing uh, entrepreneur to a retail entrepreneur, it's it's, it's totally different, man. Um, it's it's got its huge hurdles all the way around. I mean. Shit, you name it. That's the reason why we had to find, you know, cash everywhere to open this place up. I mean, the industry is huge, man. Money talks when it comes to this. So, you know, if you don't have it, man, they're not going to look at you right. So we had to find a way and hustle and sell to try to raise capital, you know, raise capital, find it from investors. But we had to think, man, what, what strategic, strategic investors can we find to open up this? So, I mean, it's a, it's... Shit, there's a huge battle with the legalization of Texas and freaking trying to get it get it going, man. It's, it's so backwards too, man. I think I mean there's there's all kinds of possibilities. It could be it, it could be politics, which again I'm not into. It, I mean it could be the you money. Know, again, money talks. Yeah, everything wraps around that. So 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 just being from here made you choose to. I guess station out of here. Yeah, man. I mean, well, yes. This is this is this is my hometown. That's the reason why. Uh, with the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. we went ahead and shut our San Antonio locations. Uh, I got a really good foundation here in New Braunfels, mm -hmm. you know, a really good one foundation in New Braunfels. I mean, being born and raised and third generation native here, I, I think it really helps people know who you are. People already know who, who I am. My mm -hmm. parents are my grandparents, you know, they already know who they are. And I think it just really helped, helped us yeah. stay where we're at right now through this whole pandemic. I mean, yeah. Yeah, what <clears throat> you guys, you guys were able to open up, you know, pretty easy on the, uh, uh, with the dead leaf courts, did y'all have any issues because of the symbol? Yeah. Did y'all have issues? Did y'all come across any uh, issues? So since we have, we're not located anywhere or yeah. anything like that, like we, were, we haven't gotten across those issues yet. But so far, you know, from what I hear, it's pretty difficult to actually do that here in the Broncos. Was, uh, yeah. Display the, the, leaf. the, the symbol, it is. And I'm trying to change that, you know, I'm trying to change that. I'm, I'm always, so I haven't drank in like six and a half years. I'm, I'm always what kind of so downtown the oyster bar. You know, the wife likes to drink and all, but uh, downtown the oyster bar, I'm outside smoking a joint. You know, <laughs> you know, let start conversation starts happening. You know, people start smelling. They're like, oh, this is that weed. Oh, I remember this time in Colorado when we went. They start talking about that. So that's how you got to break that stigma right there. That's how we've been trying to to, to break it that way. So. Yes, it is kind of ballsy, you know, to do so, you know, it is, but uh, I mean, when you're born and raised here too, you get some advantages from uh, going to high school with some officers that are now MVPD, good people, good folks, you know, even came from the same neighborhood that, you know, that, that you're from, so, you know, that kind of helps out, you know, being a grasp of that, to be able to do that, you know, New Broncos is not as strict as, as on cannabis as, uh, you know, say, say, uh, was well, Seguin and, and, and San Marcos. I mean, Waffles is actually pretty pretty good with it. I mean, the cops really don't care. You know, they haven't been really messing with you too much. So, you know, we just need more more people just to break that stigma and just, you know, just don't be afraid of, you know, whip out a joint and, you know, and just smoke it. You know, gotta do it. So other than New Braunfels in San Antonio, did you ever think of putting it somewhere else? Yeah, we actually were going to work on franchising. That's the reason why we had to have three stores collect our, dad, uh, our data. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're already talking to a franchise attorney. Well, well-rounded. They're going to do all kinds. Uh, we met at a 
at a, a franchise event in Austin because I yes. like to go to different events, you know. And, uh, but yeah, we were gonna franchise, and then Austin would be the next one. San Marcos, we had Houston okay. until the pandemic hit. So yeah. now we had to move. We had to change courses, which y'all went straight for it. Is online now. Mm-hmm. So so right now I'm establishing my online market mm-hmm. already here in New Braunfels. It's pretty strong. But I literally just uh, I think uh, this month we actually started landing pages in Dallas and Houston okay. already. Mm-hmm. So after a while, once I see cash flow coming in, I'll be, I'll be able to. Uh, 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 maybe rent out some billboards out there in Houston that directs them to my website. You, you know, uh, so so technically, I guess virtually, I am. Mm-hmm. I already opened up other locations. I'm already in Dallas. I'm hitting the Dallas market right now online. I'm hitting the Houston market. So no, nothing's changing now. I just don't have to pay money on franchise. I guess you know, because I'm not. What's that gonna cost? Me? 12, Twelve grand to start franchising and then start selling your name. Mm-hmm. So now you got to sell your name. That's really why I wanted to build a name. Build a strong name, you know. Being being on Fox 7 News Austin, News 4 San Antonio. We also were on Spectrum News, you know, that kind of helped help us get that. That's name. right. We saw them that morning. Yeah, we were at work. We were at working. Yeah, we were at work when we saw you guys on Fox 7 News. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? When you guys sent me a picture, I couldn't remember who it was. It was me. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah I was picture. like, oh yeah, shit. We're, we're wow. And then I, I fucking. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't. I was thinking it was a video. It was. Yeah, so yeah. It, it was something. It, it was a while. So yeah. It, it, it felt good because we were we were technically actually the first uh, cannabis commercial in the nation aired because we used St. Clair Broadcasting out of New York. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was regional, but we, we actually launched in, and uh, the, the very first cannabis commercial. I mean, technically, CBD is cannabis. I mean, it's mm-hmm. come from the mm-hmm. cannabis plant. I mean, I could break it down, but mm-hmm. you know, I don't think it's the right time to break it down. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. so other than in Texas, what would be your next? Really, to be honest with you. I haven't really thought about another state. I just need to dominate Texas first. There you go. You know, just like HGB and Whataburger did. There you go. You know, I mean, just like HGB. Ooh, that's a good one. You man. gotta look up to those guys. Those are yeah. the guys I look up to. As Be, I mentioned yeah. in the beginning, like being the the HGB or the Whataburger of cannabis in Texas. Where do they start at? San Antonio. HGB. Now where they're at now. They're Where's HGB? Okay, they're all over Texas. Are they in they're Oklahoma? All, no. HGB? Yeah, they're not in Oklahoma. No. Okay, so HGB in Mexico. So there, so, there so, is, so, so, so I think so, there is but, one or two HEBs here and there. Same thing with Waterburger. Well, yeah, fucking sold out. Would be in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, they sold out, but yeah. it's, it's still Texas based. It's Texas. It, it, it is Texas based. Yes. Yeah, Texas. I mean, I mean, it's still the same formula when you go out. Yeah. I, I really hope so. I really Man, hope so. Yeah. That's a bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna start tasting like in and out once you get further away from Texas. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, oh. So the wife's from California, so I'm always having that battle. Oh, in and out. Yeah, in and out. No, but hey, 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 I'm not gonna lie, she's a diehard uh, uh, water burger. Like oh, oh, she is. Hey, she's uh, diehard, she diehard water burger. Every now and then she'll get an in and out, but water burger uh, here goes. In and out is trash, bro. Yeah. The fries, as soon as they hand them to you, instantly cold. I'm like, wait. <laughs> no, like, oh, hold on, man. Y'all don't have fucking mayonnaise? The oh, secret like, menu, you gotta. Know the secret menu. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, you gotta bring your own mayonnaise. That's some fucking <laughs> <true. laughs> You can't put bacon on there, on that burger. They don't even. See, it's no. like extra stuff you can't add. It's like not nah, just what you get. What you nah, see? I need, I, need, I need grilled jalapenos. I need that bacon. The way Whataburger does it. Yeah. Creamy mm-hmm. pepper sauce. Boom. Double. Extra cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where you go. Right there. Yes, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a California thing. Oh, yeah, I've, I've tried it, so I'm not one of those people who's knocking it and haven't tried it. So yeah, I've tried yeah, it. yeah, you you got to try it. Yeah, yeah, I've tried it, tried it. never like, again, yeah. man. I was like, what the fuck is this, man? Is it happy? The sandwiches are all small compared. I'm like, I think the comparison it. with Waterbury just isn't right, though. Hey, but yeah. but but you know something? So so my wife's family is die hard in and out. Okay, um, I went ahead and gave my sister in law vacation. Sent, you know, she's from California. She wanted to visit. I said, here's these Waterburger packets. Go give it to you know those die hard, you know, the spicy ketchup. Go, you know, you know, let them enjoy that spicy ketchup. Yeah, they won't yeah. ever see that. That's they right. won't ever see it. So I was like, That's right. So <laughs> I didn't throw it at them. Man. I didn't throw it at them. That's crazy. I was like, God, I believe instantly cold with the flies. They used to have, uh, so is she a uh, Carl Jr. fan? They used to be here, but now they're not all, I think they're like all Wendy's now. Or not Wendy's, Arby's now, so I don't know what they are anymore. I used to like Carl's Jr. Man. Really? Yeah, but not over a uh, Whataburger, but yeah, still. I'd rather have a Jack in the Crack back. I want the Jack in the Box back, too. You know what I mean? For sure. Y'all don't have Jack in the Box, too? No, they the close that shit down, man. I, I would open up a Chick-fil-A, though, if I had a Chick-fil-A. I need a Chick-fil-A, I would do it. I just had Chick-fil-A this morning. 
See? And I would be open on Sundays unless I think that's one of the actual rules that you can't. Yeah, I think they make sure you can't. Yeah, man, they can't do it. That's the, yeah, see, that's terrible. That's where the money's at right there. Have your own little truck, bro, like they do. Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sundays at the church. <laughs> Yo, I got these sandwiches from yesterday. <laughs> And we're not open right now. We're not on Sundays, so don't. Y'all don't tell me. nobody about these sandwiches on Sunday. <laughs> it's a Saturday, Sunday sandwich. Sunday sandwich. Damn. Oh, shit. oh man. So what's the best way to consume drinks, man? To consume it? Yeah. For you. What's oh, for me. What's your best way? Yeah. Best way for you. Uh, smoking is gonna be my best way. Okay. Yeah. Edibles. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of every now and then, but smoking it right now. Okay. Is my is my go to. Okay. Edibles. So. so Oh, it was cool. It's gonna hit you hard though. Edibles. The edibles? Unless you have a high tolerance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, so I know I've seen. Can you oh, we're talking about CBD. We're talking about THC because I also got the legal THC that I brought in. T too. So. <coughs> Can you yeah. overdose? Can you overdose? Yes. Oh heck yeah. But but you won't die from it. I mean, scientifically, it can. I mean, you'll you'll vomit, you'll throw up. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you get really sick mm-hmm. for days. But I mean, you're not gonna die from it though. Yeah, that. But, see, but, but but there is a real overdose. When you get like three hundred milligrams of THC, you yeah, did one did that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, check this out. We we actually had we were having a debate one time, you know, in the backyard, oh, barbecuing it up and shit. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually, someone there was a little <laughs> was a little fucking out of it. <laughs> you can imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. off of edibles yeah. Yeah. and shit and wine. <laughs> and wine. Edibles and wine. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh. <laughs> So okay, so my friend he he brought up a, a good you know uh, a good argument. So he said you know what controls the brain? What the brain controls what? The body, the body right? So if the brain's tripping mm-hmm. and it's going through anxiety, mm-hmm. your heart starts pumping. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean eventually when they go out, right? I mean if you're tripping that hard, you know what I'm saying? So that I was like, oh shit! I didn't. I never really thought about that, man. You were just I mean, asleep. so could you overdose to the point where you could die? I mean, have you ever heard of it? I've really, honestly, I haven't heard of it like that. No, like not really. I, I've heard some people take some really, really strong edible, like I mentioned, three hundred milligrams. You know, I, but not really dying. First time smoking Joe, I had that feeling. For my heart was yeah, it was just racing. Was like, that's just your mind. Though. That's what I'm saying. But then that's once you're like, hey, man, come on now, don't be a statistic. You ain't gonna die. <laughs> like, I had to get my mind. I had to get my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh huh, brother, you ain't gonna die. <laughs> 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 the first brother on the news. Hell no. You ain't gonna catch me. Oh shit. Hell no. Hell no. They come back for that. No, no, I didn't want to go out like that. Ah, damn it. Ah, don't be the first one. That's point zero 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 zero. Call me on the draws, man. No, I'm like, no, man. I'm okay, it's fine. No, ain't shit. No, that'd be messed up. That would be messed up. That would be messed up. So, with that being said, what would be the worst? What's the worst that could happen if you, if someone just fucking overdid it? Have you seen it? No, I'll be honest with you, I haven't. Because I don't, I don't advise it. Because I don't advise it. I think they would just be so far just like gone zombie if they did that off of it. and then just pass out. That's what I would think. That's what I would think. I don't know, man. Hopefully it doesn't happen. But I mean, you know, the the one thing that does go through my mind is is the fact that there's anxiety and there is anxiety there. Yeah, yeah, that's you know that's what I mean. Tonight. So you what know. happens when when someone reaches that and it keeps going? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Hopefully it never happens. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. somebody's already gone there. I've yeah. been there, man. But, I mean, I fucking smoked so much. At some point where I felt like I had to tell my homeboy, like, yo, you need to call the ambulance. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm fucking tripping. I couldn't just, I couldn't relax. I was yeah, walking like back and forth. Yeah, I'm naked and shit. I'm running down the street. I'm running down the street. I'm running down the street. That's what I'm saying. I'm not sure you're going to tell you. Smoke your own around. Walking around and shit. Yo, bro, I think I'm tripping. He's at deep level suspicion. Oh, my God, <laughs> Why do I have three arms? That's over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's over here. Oh, man. Do you remember the first time you smoked cannabis? Yes. It was actually on a bus. It was a girl who, who gave it to me. I it was my freshman year. It was on a school bus. 
and uh, she passed me some. Mm. I didn't know how to roll it. I thought it was a piece of paper, so I got what is it? Just paper, and it started. And I started choking on the paper smoke. I'm like, shit, this ain't it. This ain't how you do it. And then finally, they talked. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they, no one talked about it at all. I was yeah, like, yeah. holy shit, they just passed it here. Got passed. So I was like, I just saw grass in the bag, and I was like, oh shit, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, never seen that before. So boom, and then that's when it started. Every morning, me and my brother just smoke out. And then in summer, in summer, shoot, man. It was blood and blood out. We'd always watch. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, right after we took it, blood and blood out. Friday, and then finally next Friday came out. So we started watching that like a hundred times over, just blazing. <laughs> but sometimes we forget to put the seeds, up, you know, take the seeds off the table, and here comes up here. <laughs> we still had the, man, the, the the leather belt was still the real thing back then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit, my mom made that leather belt too, right here in New High School. Put their name on it. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's how deep my roots is here in New <laughs> So did you go to school here in New Braunfels? New Braunfels High School, my dad went to Lone Star when he was a kid. Did you ever get paddled there in New Braunfels? No, they weren't no, paddled. no, 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 they didn't have a dick. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm glad. Shit. I heard the story. <laughs> they, they had it. Oh, hell no. Because you're, you're 33, right? 32? 35. 35? Yeah. Hey, I appreciate it, though, man. I appreciate it. It's the weed. It's the chronic. <laughs> <laughs> it's the chronic. Okay. So you're only going to you. So there's going to be a music question. Music. So, yeah, yeah. Name your top three songs of Smoking J2. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> He's already got someone. <laughs> <laughs> May I enter this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Shit, I was about to Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Dre is one. Dr. Dre with the beats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit, my go to back in the day was Bone Thugs. No. Okay, okay, okay. We're talking about back in the days, not right now. No, oh, right now? That's Bone Thugs too, then. Just your three, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's Bone Thugs too. Bone Thugs and Harm is one of them. Cypress? I don't know. That, that was still a little bit before my time. It was always that make them say, uh, and then, oh, yeah. ooh, Lead Out Records. Oh, Lead Out oh, Records yeah. from here. I remember Lead Out Records. I, I, I had their CD. Oh, shit. Sure. I was sipping on that purple spray. <laughs> <laughs> my brother was, was uh, my older brother was pretty much the star of that, that oh. album. That Thug Devoted? Yeah. That's him. Yeah. I don't remember yeah. what it was back then, but. The, was that what it was? The, how's it going? I just remember Lee Dutch. The Thug Devoted Gangsters, Sipping okay. Syrup, yeah. Getting High. That yes, one? Yes, yeah, that's my brother. Yeah. You know you gotta play that right now, right? <laughs> I'm gonna have to now. You're gonna have to now. You're gonna have to now. Spotify. Yeah, man. That, he, <laughs> He's over there. Yeah, that's yeah, another so, conversation, so, but shout out to my brother, Bulo. There you go. So, Lava's family. Edit. Oh, <laughs> 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 Hey, is there still beef in the uh the, like like beef against others like in, in the rap game right now? Not really, bro. Yeah, you know, not really, really. And all that, all are... so I can I can tell you like this. Uh like with soldados, it's all love, man. Oh that's good. We get love and we show love to everyone. Now if someone has an issue with us, we don't know it. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So that's the way pay I attention, say. that's good. Don't pay attention Yeah, to man, yeah. so but well, they don't, they it's, don't make it known either though. Yeah, that's another thing, man. Is like back then it was friendly competition. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and then when yeah. there was beef, you knew about it. Nowadays it's so different, bro. It's it's nothing like that. It's it's uh under the rug slugs on fucking Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Literally. shit like that. You don't know yeah. I mean that you know, that shoe don't fit me, man. So yeah. you know, I, I don't know if that's for me or not. That showed me a lot of love. No, I, and I appreciate you guys. Especially yeah, no since problem. the beginning, I, they, you were the one who I spoke to in the beginning, man. Yeah. You know, like, what was it? The hat. Like, we sold like, you a hat. The hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it went from there. Yeah. Cool. So, what's your favorite actor? Like, are you in the movies? Yeah, I'm in the movies. Who would you say is your favorite actor? Shoot, man. So many. Jim Carrey's always been really funny. Jim Carrey is good. Um. Okay, so can you break it down into genres? Though? Actor-wise, would that be easy? In a genre? Yeah. Since you say so, comedy would. Oh yeah, comedy for sure. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Comedy's at the very top. The comedy's always good too. Well, the, the, the wife likes it too, man. She's like my best friend, so shit. Yeah, I mean, we watch a lot of comedy, just bullshit and laugh. So no, no, comedy's always my. Jim Carrey's funny as hell. So. You like Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Water Boy. Yeah, the Water Boy was the perfect one, man. Oh yeah. Water Boy. Shit, Happy Gilmore, man. Like that, that one was one of my favorites. See, I don't like golfing or anything, but when I go to Top Golf over there in San Antonio, that, mm -hmm. that that's how I'm doing it. I'm, I'm all happy to get more all the time. 
just trying to hit over the fence. I don't care about the holes right there. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the white hole, the blue hole, I'm like, I'm going to go over that fence. Wedding yeah. singer, man. That was, that was yeah, one of my favorite singers. Where's your going to go? What was that last one he had? The uh, gym, what was it, gyms? Uncut gyms? Uncut gyms. Nah. Was one? I was that was, the, yeah, that was, I mean, I especially the ending, that was like, I liked it. I wasn't digging it, man. I thought it was tight. I'm ready for that, that Halloween one he's trying to come out with. It's a comedy? Yeah. It looks corny as hell, bro, but I mean, it's Adam Sandler, so Who's it's a pass. Who's in it? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. There's a new movie he's uh, coming out with? In, Hol- uh, in Halloween. Next in October. Oh, that's interesting. Check it out. There's so many good actors now, though. There's some upcoming ones. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. He's fucking hilarious, man. Yeah. Seth, Seth Rogen's... <clears throat> man. That's my dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought the hurricane season was over. <laughs> Dan- Danny McBride. You know who that is? Yeah, I know who he is. Re- uh, he plays Red off Pineapple of Pineapple Express. Express. Have you seen oh, Pineapple Express? Okay, what, what names? Do you, I, I don't go with names. Okay, okay Red. Also, oh, Red. Okay, okay. Tropic Thunder. He's mm-hmm. buying down. He's oh, Thunder's funny as hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Forget that he's a brother disguised as a brother. Oh, my disguised as a play to do. <laughs> so, speaking of movies, stay with that. If you could choose a cast to play yourself and your family, who would you choose? Or which actor would you choose? Can repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> If you could pick any actor to play your life, mm. who would it be? Who would play you in a movie? Yeah, who would play you? Cheech. Cheech. Yeah, because I played him. Oh, uh, one of my little <laughs> on my, on my, on my, on my Facebook commercials. Cheech. I was gonna say Andy Garcia. I can see like some Andy, Andy Garcia. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? From yeah, yeah, I know Andy Trump Garcia. Is. He was off of uh, Andy Garcia. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. He comes out in The Godfather. Part 3. Right? Part 3. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold Isn't on. he in um, Half Bank? No. That's another Andy Garcia. Oh. That guy, bro. Oh, okay. About that guy, right? Yeah, see? Yeah, okay. Like a little bit. Ocean's 12. Ocean's 12, yeah. Ocean's 13. The, the goal is for CBD to take over. Period. Right? Kick out the Tylenol, kick out pretty much all the shit that, I mean, it helps for at the moment, but in the long run, it, I mean, it fucks up your body, right? Yeah. But my question is, uh, here's an example. What, what's the equivalent that, what's the equivalent to a Tylenol? Like, let's say if, if I have a headache and I wanted something CBD to get rid of that headache, what would be the equivalent? I know there's many things, but... yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, you you really there really isn't an equivalent to CBD and Tylenol. Uh, it is an anti-inflammatory, about forty percent stronger than mm-hmm. your you know t- uh, Advil, uh, ibuprofen. But uh, I mean, it just depends on what will work for you, man. It could be a, a simple joint. It could be just a couple sprays under the tongue. It could be a lollipop. I mean, there's I mean just whatever low dose that you can start off with. You don't need a high dose for it. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and I tell people that all the time, you know, the don't 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 go super high, just start off small real quick. So yeah. see how your body reacts. Yeah, just see how it does. Because I think like I've talked to a few people and you know, we've had that conversation. You know what I mean? And there's people that are like, Yeah man, I would love to rather use that than Tylenol or whatever. Yeah, but totally. that's a little bit more pricier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Than paying four or five bucks for Tylenol. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So see, that, that, that's the hard part. That that's the goal. Is to it, and CV prices are dropping. I mean, it, it is, and uh, that's always been the goal from the beginning, is to get that price down. Um, still be profitable, because mm-hmm. you know, still got to be the family, but yeah, get that price down. You know, you know, get our buy. Our buy power is pretty large. I mean, we're able to get the price down. We're actually pretty low compared to everyone else. We got really good CBD, so they can come try it. Samples. I mean, we I got free samples. You can try it out. Yes, uh, I actually had a one uh, a little box that you had that we had uh, raffle, so it was oh, a yeah. box. And in that box, there was um, bombs. Man, I 
I promote the hell out of CBD. Sometimes, even at work. Oh, back back. Hey, man, yeah. I was like, I had some of the best sleep. Oh, yeah, you taking a bath. And that was the last time I took a bath since I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to drop that in some yeah. water. Yeah. And I had some of the best sleep. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, if I wasn't so just like, ugh. It's a lot of water, having a shower, and put it in. So I like, I would do it again. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, whenever I'm aching, I'm just like, man, I need to get a bath bomb. <laughs> so bath bombs are nice, man. Uh, uh, we got a lot of people that use those bath bombs. I mean, we got the ones to help you sleep. My daughter uses it too. See, my two boys were on ADHD medication. That, you know, in the beginning, before I even knew about cannabis and what, what, what it could really do, I mean, it, I mean, it was just, at the time, it's all about getting high on it, you know? Uh, but looking back, so my kids were on Adderall and all that good stuff, but my daughter did get to experience that. We put her straight on, because she said, my daughter said it, my two boys, they were 15, 14. So we went straight on CBD for her. We did not get her on the Ritalin, because because the ADHD is there. Mm -hmm. It's always been there for me too, ever since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. I think mean, that's the reason why, you know, um, uh, open up the business was perfect, and I, I, I take action, I don't think too much. I just take action instead, you know, and just try to open something up. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, man, I mean, it's, it's it's a, it's all the way around health and wellness. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're gonna get sleep. You're gonna get. I'm just gonna help with uh, with uh, kids in school. Get focused. That was my trouble. Focusing was my trouble. And uh, you know, thinking back and getting high and stopping the riddle and an Adderall that I used to take. I think it was my freshman year. You know, I just started smoking weed even more. Um, I noticed that. You know, shoot. You know, I'm, I'm actually passing my grades and stuff. You know, you know, thinking back. I'm like, Okay, okay, this is good. So, I didn't know it then, you know, again, but you look back, you can see. So, okay, yeah. what about we stops time? It slows that shit down. Oh, it does slow it down. <laughs> it's all like, hey, but sometimes, it slows sometimes, it down. sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I need to slow down. <laughs> Man, you know, hey, when I mean, you guys know, you guys look how look how hard you have to work to open up deadly corpse. You know, I mean, it's 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 not a clock in, clock out, man. So sometimes it's good to wind down. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at night, so I, I hit enough during the day mm -hmm. to keep me keep me focused. To let loose, oh man, I'm I'm going at it. You know, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'm in my my movie theater room, and I'm now smoking, or I'm in my balcony, I'm smoking now. Yeah. You know, wind down, wind my brain down, man. Right. It, it, yeah. It's 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 running too fast. Mm -hmm. So I like the time of slowing down. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. So the liquid form is obviously better than smoking, right? CBD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it processes differently in, mm -hmm. in your digestive tract. Mm -hmm. um, get a little science here. So, yeah. so delta nine actually processes when you consume it mm -hmm. into delta eleven. Mm -hmm. Look it up. Y'all yeah, guys look up delta eleven. Um, <laughs> That's why edibles hit you a lot stronger, because uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's a little bit harsher chemical. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about natural chemical. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about natural chemical. Uh, but yeah, no, it processes it, it changes to delta eleven. Yeah. So and that's the reason why it hits you so hard. Uh, I know you already mentioned about edibles. Mm -hmm. You know, liquid. Liquid's the same thing. You know, THC liquid. It's the same thing. It's because it's hitting the stream yeah. quicker than. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. No, it's not hitting quicker. It's just that it's processing right. in your digestive tract and turning to. Your digestive enzymes actually changes that molecule to delta 11. So it doesn't actually hit the stream faster. No, no, no. Nah, nah, nah. It takes about what? You know, an edible takes about what, 45, an hour, sometimes two hours. What about a liquid form? Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Same thing. thing. You're consuming it like an edible. Damn, that's good. Yeah, okay. So that's yeah, cool. Yeah, so. Do y'all sell edibles? Yeah. No shit. Like suckers and stuff, right? Any other suckers, suckers, yes, but we sell the THC uh, delta 8 uh, gummies. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys gotta check those out. Yeah. I. I mean, I'm curious. You know what I mean? I so, like some. I get some. So I've, I've been trying to oh, get you, yeah, uh, yeah. some edibles. You know what I mean? You in your case probably want to try, yeah, CBD because of the sleep. Yeah, I'm pretty bad at, at sleeping. <laughs> so, like, yeah, you probably, yeah. It's some of the best sleep I get. Yeah, you will. You will. I got another question. What were you doing before you got into the CBD business? And, and what, like, you know, everyone has that moment, that that epiphany moment, man, when they're like, shit, I think this is what I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've done that. I, we went from, so right before this, we were all, all the real estate investor. So, you know, selling, flipping, not necessarily flipping houses, but selling contracts. So real estate investing was, was my deal. Like I said before, retail, I was, I was in the service business. Then we owned a cleaning company, MB Cleaning Services. That's who we are. That's who we were. I mean, everyone who was giving back to the community too as well. Um, what was that? And then before then, the entrepreneurship came even when we were doing couponing. 
Yeah, yeah, we we used to do that. I don't know if y'all ever seen that show, Extreme Couponing. We used to do that. We used to. Uh, My wife used to. Yeah, <laughs> did she? Okay. So 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 we used to we used to sell the coupons, and I mean we make really deep, good money, man. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Uh, sell the products, and we got it really cheap at Walmart or something. Mm-hmm. So, but um, but yeah, we've always been in you know, shoot, entrepreneur since age 26. Yeah, about age 26. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, real estate investing was, uh, to go back to it, was uh, uh, my last thing. But this hit me, this actually seeing that that I could open a store because someone already had did, and so I was like right behind them opening. I mean, I act, I acted fast, you know, so we can do this. But yeah, it was CBD. CBD is the passion. Cannabis has been my passion, man, you, you know? So it's always been my passion. I love anything and everything about cannabis, man. So. And that's another question, and I think we, we 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 touched on it earlier in the podcast. But when I heard that you were opening up a CBD shop, or you were trying to open up a CBD yeah. shop, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. "Man, they are not gonna let this dude open up a CBD shop. It'd be badass." But because you know we grew up in New Braunfels, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I've experienced. The, you know, the good side of New Braunfels, but also the bad side of New Braunfels. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the bad side of New Braunfels, that's what kind of convinced me, or I just wasn't convinced, like, man, they're going to shut them down, man. They're not going to let them do it. Right? How did you get past that? Okay. It's funny that you said that because, yes, we're in the process of opening. We didn't have much trouble. You know, people already knew it spread pretty fast. That that spread fast, especially after MB Journal. You guys need to follow him, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it blew up really fast. Everybody started knowing. We found a location. We went. We didn't. We paid attention to all the negatives. We went. We did it. We opened it. And then on our grand opening, which was on 420, we had the Chamber of Commerce. We had just got a membership come in. Uh, one of the guys that that were there actually told me, "Hey, because um, uh, we put on a really good education there when they were all there. The whole Chamber of Commerce was there. I mean, they wanted to hear this. The guy said, you know, after our presentation." You know, with them, they see. He comes up to me, goes, "You know what? I'm really glad you guys are here." Uh, half of us was actually emailing last night. We cannot let these guys in. What are we doing? Why are we letting them in our membership? The other half was like, "Look, we're gonna see them tomorrow. Let's mm-hmm. let's let's just go check it out. Let's go hear what they got." Mm-hmm. So, and I got a speaker in the uh, in the company too. Really hard passion into natural wellness. Um, and uh, no, no, he, uh, he he gave them really good education there. Uh, he changed their mind, and that's what it's all about, man. Change their mind, show them the positive of cannabis. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know, getting high, you know, it, it's cool. I mean, everyone, you know, drinks alcohol. They, you know, they drink, they get drunk. Um, but getting high, altering your mind, there's nothing wrong with it, man. I mean, you're medicating too at the same time. So, yeah. you know, that's how we had to break it down to them. But there's really no struggles in your brothels. I have not had a struggle in your brothels like people had in Dallas. You know, people were getting locked up in Dallas, getting raided. I did not get raided. I think, you know, being embedded and being having deep roots here in mm-hmm. Braunfels was, was was also what made it happen here for me. Um, I mean, again, I come from just right over here on San Antonio Street. So, yeah. I had another question. So, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure kids, you know, they got the CBD vape pens and stuff like that. Has anything come back to you? Like nothing. No, man. Nah, nothing. Nothing comes back to me. We we do ID because you do got to be twenty one. They they did change that law. It was eighteen at the time, but mm-hmm. no, we ID. We strict ID. I have not had that. Um, could they have gone away with it? I'm I'm sure. I mean, I've had some employees too. Uh, sometimes you know you got to find the right employee you know you know to work with. Also, mm-hmm. you know, make sure that they see your vision. Um, but you know, no, I have not had that come back to me. You know, we're we're actually pretty strict on you know getting. Where, where it goes. So. so I feel like uh, Go Green Open, right? Mm-hmm. And then I started seeing this CBD shop and then that CBD shop. I mean, in a sense, y'all paved the way. You know what I mean? Or at least help pave the way, right? But what makes Go Green different from all the rest of them? Sure, just the, the, the products in itself, the vetting process that we actually have. Um, I have not came across another CBD store that's actually really strict on what products go onto the shelves as ours. Um, we figured it out since day one where those are going to lead to, the stigma behind it, and it had to be done right. It, it really had to be done right. And so the vetting process that we've had, 
because we have it, we could have let these bogus CBD companies come in mm -hmm. and, and sell it. Most people look at the dollar, you know, the, the bottom the bottom line. Uh, we look at the quality because we're here for the long term, but our vetting process is so strict. I've seen chemicals, I've seen pesticides and products. I don't make it be known because other people will make it be known. My lane is to stay where I'm at and keep moving forward mm -hmm. as long as I'm not bringing them in here, you know, and on my shelves. Because I do got a high demand. I do got a lot of traffic that comes through. And so each and every single one of them need to have a product that they're not going to get sick on. Yeah. And I have really have not had that. I have not had anyone get sick. So I have to say our vetting process is very strict. Regulations are already happening. So now we, got, we have got to apply for our license to sell CBD now. So that's happening too, which is good. I'm glad we're seeing positive like that. You know, I don't mind paying the state something so that way they can make their money. They see money coming flowing in with cannabis. I mean, it's, it's going to change Texas. Yeah. Texas will yeah. legalize. They just got to see the money. So we got to get serious, you know, and, and you know, pay our taxes, pay our dues. So that way they can see the revenue coming from cannabis, a CBD store. What can medical, mar medical marijuana do now? Yeah. So yeah. be, I mean, be like, it's like in Colorado, man. I mean, you should look at, look at uh, all the benefit, you know, the benefits that. That they have, man. Yes. Shit, their crime rate has been down. I mean, it's still there, but I mean, it went down since they legalized. You know what I mean? And it hasn't gone back up because yeah. everyone's just kicking back, man. They are. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You see, technically, you don't have to tax CBD as long as it says. Um, I'm talking about sales tax wise. When y'all come mm -hmm. in, you got to pay your 8.25 percent sales tax. Um, because I don't. You don't have to, as long as it's a uh, sup uh, dietary supplement. But I do, regardless, so they can see the revenue coming in. So they won't mess with me. I mean, you, you, you've got to find a way to, because politics, I mean, mm -hmm. again, that, not my big thing, but I know that all they think about is money, money, money. So mm -hmm. you, you, you do have to feed it so that way they can say, don't, don't mess with these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, they're paying the taxes. So, you know, yeah, the revenue that, that can come up, come across it, yeah, yeah it's going to be, it'll be huge for Texas. So very huge for Texas. The black market alone is freaking huge mm -hmm. comparison to legal states here in mm -hmm. Texas. It's time to tax it. Let's, let's get on it. That's all right. So can we still add it and just edit it? We'll talk about it off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else? So where, where do you see the cannabis uh, industry going for Texas in about two, three years? Uh, really, to be honest with you, um, we really don't know, man. It could be any time. The, the, as, as fast as they legalized hemp, you know, that they, they took it off the Schedule One drug list, yeah. that was unexpected. That was actually a special call for them to do so. But, I mean, it could it, it could be really, really soon, or it could be, you know, a few years from now. Shit, well, uh, what did Seth Rogen say in Pineapple Express? He was like, man, if they don't legalize in two years, I, I'll just fucking Before give up humanity. on humanity. Yeah, man. <laughs> Shit's been longer than two years. It's been way longer. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a fight, man. It's it's, it's a huge battle, man. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. There 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 are CBD stores too that that really take it serious, even on the politics side. I like to say I don't follow it, but I have business partners that do follow that, and and you know, I mean, that has to be that has to be taken serious too. So I'm glad you know I'm able to separate myself, spread myself. In the go green business, because there's there, there's a whole lot of aspects to it than just selling the products. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of back end on this here to make sure that they don't just shut us cannabis, you know, down. So, hey, but with, with guys like you, man, supporting, and yeah, that really helped you cause. That's why I had you guys out there in Phoenix Saloon. Man, I want y'all. I mean, I mean, that's history from the Broncos. Be honest with you. Hey, will people write a book on it? Will politics write a book on it? No, but hey, we know. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Well, that and, was fun too. And and one one thing I want to say, man, is like, you know, New Braunfels has its places. It has their historical shops, restaurants, mm -hmm. Pat's Place, mm -hmm. things like that. You know what I mean? Things that have been here forever, even before we were born. You know what I mean? And in my opinion, like I see that with Go Green. You know what I mean? I see like psh, long before we're gone, bro. You know what yeah, I mean? No. And Go Green is going to be that shop, that CBD shop that everyone goes to. Dude, I you appreciate know what I mean? that, man. No, I, I appreciate those thoughts on that. It, it, it will be. It will be. Anyone else have questions? Cheers to that, man. Hell yeah.
Thank you, guys. Hey, man, no problem. But since I am in San Antonio, when are you going to be? He has one in San Antonio. So I was in San Antonio. He was. I was in San Antonio. Oh, okay. So I had two locations in San Antonio. I was right there next to the Guitar Center. I was right there and I was in that little ranch, so uh, it was close to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, San Antonio had, had different rules on out there than the Ruffles did. The Ruffles is a little bit more lighter on businesses opening up compared to San Antonio and your masks, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was a little bit easier to stay right here. So, are you going to eventually go back? Virtually. Eventually. I, I think virtually. 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 Yeah, okay. So, I mean, yeah, that's what's going on. Definitely. Um, you want to give a shout out? I mean, let people know what the website is. And- no, hey, I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you guys letting me on here and hearing me out. Um, but yeah, y'all check us out, man. We got a really good quality product. Y'all come in, y'all sample. We're located right next to Bucky's. Um, you can visit us too online, gogreenbotanicals.com. Um, yeah, we just brought in also legal THC. Y'all don't know what that is? Come, come check me out. We have all kinds of vlogs on it. We'll educate you on it. You can sample it. We got free samples of it. And uh, check it out yourself. They're they're legit. Out the bath bombs. I got you. I'm gonna bring one. Just give him one, bro. I'm gonna get you. Don't worry, I'm gonna get you four bucks, man. I'm gonna promote the hell out of the bath bombs. I got you. I got you. They work. But man, anybody else got anything else? Uh, smoke. Smoke. Maximus. Good, good. Poetic, we good. Hey, well, Ben. Appreciate you for coming. Oh, doing this, Thank man. you guys. Hey, man. It's been a while, boo, man. We got you here. We thank you for it, man. Keep Appreciate doing it. what you're doing in New Brothels. Online. Just keep expanding, man. Get the message out there. I sure will. Appreciate you. Once again, man, Ben of Go Green Botanicals. Check him out. He's here in New Brothels. Also online, man. This is the Deadly Podcast, episode 11. We appreciate you watching. It's your boy MOB, and we are out of here. I've only played it three times, the third time I ever played that song. Is it recording ready? Yeah. Okay, cool. This is called uh, Tonight. I wrote this on the way, uh, on the way back from Spring Branch. I left my guitar out at the Shade Tree Saloon in Spring Branch, Texas. And uh, on the way back, I, there was something that came over me and I just started getting these lines coming through my head. and. And uh, I kind of wrote this song about how, as a husband, I've been married since I was uh, 19 years old to the love of my life, but as a husband, you think that you are doing things right, but then you see the self-destruction in yourself whenever you really reflect on things. And so I think that I I saw that in me, and I kind of wrote this song and uh, wrote it for my wife in a way, but uh, almost as like an apology and that I know I'm aware of the things that I do. But anyway, the song's called Tonight.
Most at these bloodshot eyes Didn't see red too Yeah.